I'm joined by Clay Nunley, the head coach of Rono College Men's Basketball. They were picked number two in this year's preseason poll. Coach, the differences start right there. Last year, this time, I was announcing you as Randolph's head coach. Now you're Roanoke's head coach. Talk a little bit about just making the change, going from one job, in the, from one job, not only from one job to another, but one job in the league to another job in the league. Right. Talk about the process so far. It's been a, it's been a, a relatively smooth one, and I have a lot of people to thank for that. Our current players at Roanoke and the administration, and the staff have been outstanding in helping me to get adjusted. Uh, anytime you. You leave a place where you were for nine years. You know you're, not, you're leaving behind not just um, you know you don't leave the relationships per se, but you, you you leave the working aspect of that behind. But you also leave routines and expectations behind. And being there for nine years, I, I obviously kind of knew what to expect, knew how my routine was going to be, um, knew the ins and outs uh, of the place, and I'm, I'm developing that now, uh, being here at Roanoke, and uh, and that's been exciting. Uh, it's a, it's um, an exhilarating time for me, uh, a lot to look forward to, and I've been very thankful for uh, uh, all that so many have done to help make my transition a smooth one. When we take a look at the makeup of your squad right now, a little bit different for you also coming in with this one. Last year you were familiar with the team from looking at it from a film perspective and playing against them. Now you get to get in the locker room with them, get down to X's nose sure. with the players back on squad. Talk about the makeup of your squad this year and how they've taken to your system coming, right. into, coming into the team. Well, the group's been uh, outstanding in terms of their coachability and their willingness to want to learn and to, and to want to please. Uh, I could not have asked for them to be better in that regard. They've worked extremely hard. I think it's a hungry group. Uh, I felt that going all the way back to last spring when I first met with them. You know, they had a good year last year. They had some success, and I think they want to build on that. Uh, I think they understand that it's, it's in our league especially, it's a, a hard road ahead. A lot of work that has to go into to doing that, but uh, I think they're eager to to want to embrace that challenge. Uh, it's a good nucleus of guys, a uh, talented group, and uh, and I feel very privileged to be able to coach them. When we take a look at the league as a whole, last year was the first year that we only had one team make the NCAA tournament. Only one team make the NCAA tournament since nine ten. We haven't had a repeat champion since the five six season. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about the parity that you see in the league and what might be in store for the conference this season with those younger squads now becoming older squads. Sure. Well, I think any time that we only get one team in, I think that's a little bit of an aberration. Uh, the, the reality of it is anybody that has any familiarity with our conference can recognize quickly how good the league is uh, top to bottom. The teams that finish at the top of the ODEC are always going to have a chance to be very successful and compete nationally with anybody in the country. But by the same token, the teams that finish in the middle of the pack and maybe even those that, that are uh, in the bottom third of the league are going to be very talented, well-coached, solid groups that have success outside of our league. I think that speaks to so many different uh, uh, aspects of the conference. Obviously, the talent, the quality of the coaching, uh, the, the history and the pedigree of the programs. And if you're a competitor, I think you enjoy being a part of that. And so uh, it's a privilege to coach in the ODAC, just as it's a privilege to play in the ODAC. And um, you know, you know, every year, every night, of course, as the cliche goes, you know, you're going to be in for a battle. And we finish up here with one thing that is specifically unique to you: is that you've got a a, a player that that starred for you. Pete Hamilton is now the head coach at Randolph, taking over the lead chair there. Talk a little bit about the pride and what you expect to see out of teams coached by him. Yeah. It's, uh, it's special for me. Uh, obviously, the, the easiest word that comes to mind is proud. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely proud, proud of Pete, uh, proud uh, that Randolph has given him that opportunity. Uh, he's deserving of that. Uh, I would argue, I would venture to say that, that uh, really um, he, he is, um, you, you want to have somebody that not just is good at, 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 at the job, but loves the place. And, and I think that's special with any hire you make in any line of work. And uh, Pete is not just a talented coach. Uh, he loves Randolph. And, uh, and I think that's what anybody should want when they make a, a hire. And, uh, and so I'm excited for him. Uh, I have great confidence in him. I know that he will do well. And, uh, and for me, it's, uh, um, I'm, I'm just very happy for him. Well, Coach, I want to thank you for joining me today. Good luck this season. Great, thank you.